By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I'm talking about why you shouldn't make assumptions about your partner's sexual likes and dislikes, and I'm taking your calls. Topics include, you love your sex toys, but your fiance hasn't quite come around yet. What to do if you keep getting stereotyped as a taker because of how you look, but you're definitely a giver. And my rules to maintaining something long distance. Hint, can't be that way forever. All this and more, thanks for listening. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, you can find everything at sexwithemily.com. You can also subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast. That totally helps us. We love when you review. You know the podcasts are available everywhere now. Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, iTunes, all over the place. Also, find me on SiriusXM Radio, Stars Channel 109. I am there Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. for your listening pleasure, Pacific Time. And, oh my God, it's been so fun reaching everyone. So you guys can just call in or get a free three-month trial. Do that. Sexwithemily.com slash SXM. Or listen, if you don't want to do that, just call in. 888-947-8277. I will be taking your calls 10 hours a week. How's that? And you know I love talking to all of you. All right, follow me on social media also at Sex with Emily across the board and enjoy the show. So this is a study that came out or a story, which I've heard this in recent years, but I love when things get scientifically proven. Me too. Science and sex just go together so well. They do. They really, really do. And we're going to be doing our own studies here, our own polls, which we'll keep you updated on. But this is that women get bored in bed faster than men. How about that? (laughs) Blowing your mind out of water, which I've known this in my heart and soul. Not that we get bored. I mean, not like that we're always bored. Let me break this down for you. So the study suggests that women grow disinterested in sex with a long-term sexual partner faster than men. And the thing about why I find this interesting is because I think this also flies in the face of what we often believe when we talk about myths around sex or things that we all kind of believe is that men, men are hungry for variety and they want they get bored and they need to have sex with somebody else and women just want attention and love and all those things which you know so that all of that is true in many cases but the study shows that if they women have been together more than a year and they live with their partner they feel less sexual desire so what does that mean it means that we get bored in a monogamous relationship because we actually crave variety and while men are okay with the kind of sex they're having We lose desire first, but what happens is, and you guys know if you've been listening, we lose desire, but we don't know how to talk about it. We have a hard time accepting, women sometimes have a hard time accepting that they want more sex than their partners because they we've all told that women are, I'm talking about stereotypes here, women are frigid, not tonight, honey, I have a headache, and it's men who are more like, I want sex all the time. So when women feel like, God, I want sex more, we automatically blame ourselves and think like, well, that's really weird. That's not normal. I don't want to offend my partner. You know, we've we've been told that men want it more. So we just kind of decide not to say anything many times. And then the, the sex life just grows into something that's really kind of more comfortable and predictable. 
And because women, we want more sex and we want it to change, but we don't know how to ask for it. And we don't even know sometimes what that looks like Mm -hmm. to want more sex than a partner, to want a different kind of sex. And so this is another example how women sometimes repress our desires, repress what we want in bed. And we're kind of taught to squash it in many ways Mm -hmm. that that we just feel like we won't will be rejected if we stand up and ask for what we want and that that we we know that we want variety but we don't know how to bring it to the relationship which is why we are here to help you figure that out to figure out how to ask for what you want that you're totally fine if you want more sex than your partner but how do we work around it and another interesting thing here it says and this is so true the first time we have sex with someone new we have an anxiety, right? Or the first few times we're afraid mm-hmm. they're going to reject us. Like maybe they won't want to be with us anymore. Or maybe they won't show up. And then finally, when we're comfortable in the relationship, we never want to live with that insecurity anymore. We're like, I've got someone. Mm-hmm. I'm settled down. They like having sex with me. Why rock the boat? Yeah. I don't want to rock the boat. If I bring it up, I, we're so afraid of re- At the end of the day, in many areas of life, the reason why we don't speak up, men and women, we're afraid to be rejected and that ultimately we're not lovable. That's like the human condition. Yeah, and that we're fearful, and fearful of. Do you think also that in the beginning, because it's new, it just feels like it's good, and yes. then when time goes by, that they're like, "Oh crap! If I bring this up now, they're going to think this entire time has been terrible." Yes, absolutely. We're so sensitive to words, and then we're so sensitive to words around sex. So anytime we get any feedback around sex, a lot of us just turn it and think, "Well, what am I doing wrong? I've been messing up the whole time. It's been really bad. My partner's not happy." So. Yeah, we, we we do. We don't say anything because we are afraid of that, bringing it up. And the interesting thing is that also um, this point, I like this. The bottom line, bring as much variety as possible into a relationship so the sexual activity remains interesting. So compared to a water park, if you always do the same slides, you're going to end up bored. If you're always doing the same things, you end up bored. Yeah, and then you go, it's like just kind of going through the motions and then it's like, are you even, I don't think either partner really thinks about why they're even doing it the same way each time. Right. Because they, they don't know other options to get out of it either. Like, and like what you were just asking me, what you just said, which I didn't get to was about how women, what did you say in my brain? Women who don't. Well, it's because they're like. They, oh, they, we're afraid. At the beginning, it's always great. Yeah. It's always great. You guys, this whole honeymoon phase, it's great in the beginning the same reason, like the opposite is true. So it's great in the beginning because it's new and novel and it is varied. Mm-hmm. You've never done doggy style with this person. You've never had an orgasm with this person. You've never had sex outside. With, there's all these firsts and that's novelty and that's different and exciting in the newness early stages. So mm-hmm. you maybe you maybe you are having better sex. It might not be the best sex, the most pleasurable sex, but that you're stimulated because it's new stimuli. It's new mm-hmm. information, new stuff. And then... Six months go by, year, you move in, and then you're like, oh, yeah, no, it's not it's not that it wasn't great or whatever, but you got kind of bored of it, mm-hmm. and you don't know how to bring it, keep it spicy, keep it interesting. You don't know how to keep doing things and talking about it, so you don't get bored. It is possible, you guys. That's what I'm here to tell you is that it is possible to dig yourself out of a sexual rut. It is possible to figure out what you actually want in bed and what you want in a relationship and then communicate that effectively so you won't be rejective and you can even do it in a way that your partner's going to get on board. Because mm-hmm. your partner should get on board with the plan of wanting to have better sex. I think that's a that's a fine goal for every relationship. <laughs> I mean, it should be. Yeah. So bring- what, do you, what do you say to people? Because, you know, there have been times where we've had callers call in or people email in to us and they say that, you know, I want to spice things up or I want to, and I've tried to talk to my partner and ask them and they've just like, like, no, I'm completely fine with how our sex life is. Like, do you think that like, that's actually true? Those people are actually really content with doing the same thing and they've been together for five years? I think if you scratch the surface that most people's first reaction are going to be like, everything's fine. It's great. And they might actually believe that because they've never once even questioned that maybe sex isn't as great. And then if they ever have even, their brain has gone to the point where maybe it could be better, they shut down, they repress it because they're like, I wouldn't even know what to do with making my sex life better or more interesting. So it's a lot easier to say, everything's great. I love it. And so my point is, yeah, it could be great, but I don't know. I look at it like life. Like I'm the kind of person who's always learning. I'm Mm -hmm. always taking new therapy classes, sex courses, reading, learn. I'm always growing, even though I'm the expert in many ways. I don't think I'm ever done learning. And I feel that way about 
exercise. I don't do the same thing every day because I want to mix that up too. So mm. it's just the way we, we learn. So I think to get set in any way in your if you guys go out to eat at the same restaurant every night, you do the same exact thing all the time in any way, you're going to get bored. So I think that people who say, no, it's great. I don't need anything. I think that that's sad to me because I feel like if you really take a look at it, it might be even great. You might even say, Emily, it's the best sex of my life. But I'm going to argue with you that, yeah, that's great. But what about making it even better? better more pleasurable what if there's something else i could teach you that would con- that would guarantee that you and your partner will always be into sex and working on it and looking at ways to make keep it alive and keep it interesting what do you say to people cuz this has also come up and i always think it's interesting cuz it's like it's almost like forming a new habit but not making the habit the same all the time cuz people will be like well i said something and then that next time we had sex, it was awesome. And then after that, it just went back to the same old yeah, stuff. Yeah, and you got to bring it up. That The second it goes back to the other stuff, you bring it up again. This is the main thing, you guys. The sex conversation does not happen once. It happens a lot. And it happens in a way that you both feel comfortable with, even if it's awkward at first, but you'll get into your own groove of how to talk about it. So yeah, if it doesn't happen, how much better is it in the moment or in that, in that, but the next day to be like, mm-hmm. oh, I loved two weeks ago how you made that, effort to initiate and that felt so good and I'd love to keep that going you always want a positive reinforce I mean I guess we're all afraid also being nagging like people called the other night they're like we had it 10, 10 years ago we had the conversation I just think that's that's not enough you know what are the statute of limitations on yeah like, the like sex 10 talk? years ago I don't remember what happened 10 minutes ago <laughs> I don't like if we had a conversation maybe we had it do I remember and a lot of times, it's kind of like when you go to the, this is the sex conversations initially reminding people to go to a doctor and you're getting like a diagnosis or they're telling you something about your health. We often only hear like 30% of what they're saying. So if you if it's the first time you've talked to your partner about sex, something they might have been like half freaked out. What am I doing wrong in their brain? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to please you. And then they miss it. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to bring it up again. So just remember, it's like that. It's like a, it's a, it's an intense conversation that can elicit a lot of fear in people but ultimately if you just keep bringing it up in a loving way it's gonna work out so jamie i've been thinking Mm -hmm. picking a new toy is kind of like finding a partner i mean if you're gonna spend that much time together in the bedroom you gotta know if it's the right one that's very true i never really looked at it like that i know and there's so many to choose from now and there's the whole like bigger better deal around the corner people say that about dates and stuff Mm -hmm. like is this person gonna be better but when you narrow it down to the right toys, those are the only ones we talk about here. Because exactly. they matter. I don't want you guys to make a mistake. That's why we're so excited to welcome Cal Exotics to the podcast and to the show. They're one of the very first founders of the American toy industry. And they still run, it's still run by the woman who started it. She's awesome. So they definitely know how to get your needs met. And they're they're a cool company. Like when we went to Sex Toy Expo and they were there, they had a tiki bar set up and they're just very inviting and they were... Jamie loved their free drinks. <laughs> I did, but it was like everyone no, was super nice so there. No, they're so cool. They're like Very a quality, nice. like quality brand. They have luxurious toys. Okay, so their new Pave line. Oh, so pretty. You guys, they're gorgeous. Like this is the kind of toy you legitimately, it's a great gift for your friends, for your partner. It's like they're bright turquoise, kind of like a Tiffany's box. Mm-hmm. And it's like what you've been wanting, but even better, honestly. Like I got something from Tiffany's once and the best part was opening the box. Well, yeah, because then I it's mean, just a it bracelet. was like some weird. It wasn't even. It was like a keychain. But the point is, <laughs> just the thing about the box. But mm-hmm. these toys, you open the box, and then they have little diamonds on them. Like they have little, not real diamonds, obviously, but that would be a million dollars for the vibrator. But <laughs> like, like they're just so cute. The Pave Maryland. It's a dual motor rabbit massager adorned with crystals and offering thirty five sensational vibrations. That's settings. a lot. Thirty five. Thirty five. I mean, don't ever tell me you're getting bored there in the bedroom. If I'm you take- have 35 settings, what else do you need me to tell you? To tell I'm taking anyway? a week off, by the way, Emily. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm taking the week off. I don't care if you guys stay here and try toys while I'm out of town. But, um, okay, you guys, if you also want a more controlled way to play with your partner, the Pave Diana is the perfect travel size vibe to get it done. So, oh, maybe I'll bring that one on my trip. Oh, yeah, because you're leaving. I'm Do leaving. It. You should see the toys I'm traveling with. And this is one of them. So if you always want to treat yourself to one of these incredible toys or get one as a gift, this is the thing. If you like, I've been wanting to get one with my partner, but she might be weird about it. These are beautiful and amazing and reasonably priced. Check out the full Pave line of toys by going to sexwithemily.com slash Calex. That's sexwithemily.com slash C-A-L-E-X. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we come back. 
on to your calls. Okay, we have Mackenzie, who's 25 in Utah, and she wants to know how to get her partner into using toys. All right. Hey, Mackenzie. Hey, Emily. Hi. Thanks for calling. One of my yeah, favorite subjects. Of course. I'm well, here for perfect. you. Yes. <laughs> ask some questions. So I've been with my partner. He's my now fiance for about three and a half years. And I've, over the last year, been trying to help get him to open up to using toys um, just because I have a harder time achieving orgasm without them. Yeah. And kind of just vanilla with things and just things. Oh, things are great without it. It's the same. It's great. But I feel much closer when we can orgasm together. And right. I feel like that helps get me there, whether a vibrator or a bullet. Yeah. And I just want to know if you have any tips. Maybe Absolutely. Toys you'd recommend. Yeah, no, let me tell you this. So, so Mackenzie, it's, um, here's the thing about using toys. Like you, you know, that's what gets you there. For a lot of women, we don't orgasm during intercourse. It just doesn't happen. Like 20% of women do, 80% don't. And so it makes sense that you need your toys. So here's what you have to overcome is that it sounds like your fiance said he doesn't want them in the room. Is that what you said? He's not as comfortable with it? Yeah, not that he doesn't want them. Oh. He's, I guess he's just not as comfortable. Like, uh, I feel like the awkward part is if we start getting busy and then I reach to my nightstand, it's kind of like an awkward transition. The awkward pause, <laughs> right. Okay, so this is, I've heard, right, exactly. Yeah. So he's not that he's not down with it. So what you got to do is literally leave it. I mean, what I do is, because I'm the same way, I go in my room to have sex, like it's out. Like I'm, it's part of it. It's like I grab the lube. I'll use condoms or whatever and the toys. So I think once you start do using it with him and he sees like how much pleasure that gives you and, and your vibrations feel great for men too, he'll be comfortable. But it's like a lot of things. It's like ripping that bandaid off. Like the first time it might be awkward, but once he sees it, you know, it doesn't have to be. You might also want to just show him before. So wait, I'm sorry, but you said you have used it with him before, but it gets awkward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just gets a little awkward or... I just want him to be more, I guess, excited and all around trying more things. I, I mean, three and a half years isn't forever, but we're going to be going on forever. Yeah, you <laughs> guys are getting married. So so here's the thing, Mackenzie. It sounds to me like, do you also have, that you guys have to have a conversation about what, what you require, what you need, like what turns you on? Because it sounds like maybe a little foreplay. If you probably, you need more clitoral mm-hmm. stimulation like every woman on the planet. So oral sex foreplay mm-hmm. slowing things down a little bit have you guys experimented with any of that yes we have and um uh, she's been a lot more uh noticing and trying and helping me a lot more now so that's been helpful i think some of our struggle is that my libido is a lot higher than his so um making the time last of a you know maybe once or twice a week versus him getting off really quickly because it's easy for him too, but just harder for me. Even previous partners it's yeah. been hard with. So the fact that he's stepping up means a lot to me. Um, and I guess, so I guess that answers my question a little bit of trying to work on communication. Yeah. Um, with that. That's what we're all talking so. about. Here, so here's the thing about communication. That's really, I mean, people are like, oh, do you talk about blowjobs all day on your show, Emily? I've never heard it. I'm like, yeah, I do. But really, mostly what I talk about is communication. Communication is a lubrication. The more we talk about it, we're going to have better sex, but it's not easy for us to do. So I'm so glad you realize that that's really what it is. And so my best tips for communication, Mackenzie, is really just to have a conversation about it and outside the bedroom. So you don't do it right after sex and you don't do it right before sex, but you do it like when you guys are hanging out on a Sunday morning or having brunch or whenever you guys feel like you're, you know, just relaxing and you're in your good space. And so that's when you say to him, you know, I'd love to talk about, you know, let's talk about our sex life. Like I'm I'm already loving the sex we're having and like, let's figure out some other things we could do to continue to make it interesting and great for both of us. And while you might be cringing right now because you like can't imagine those words coming out of your mouth, I'm telling you, it just, it'll get easier. He's probably going to say, you know, okay, let's talk. Or if he doesn't, you know, you just kind of bring it up again. And this is the kind of thing that this is going to be your husband. You're going to spend your life with him. 
that it's going to get easier over time and then and then it's going to become part of what you guys talk about like where are we going to go on summer vacation you know wh- where are we going to go like to for dinner and then how was our sex last night and it becomes this is how sex gets better so i think it's making sure that it's casual you're not blaming you're not shaming you're not telling him that I need this to happen. I need that to happen. It's more like, what could we do together to make sure that, you know, we're both having pleasure? So it's really more like that. And then, yeah. And then finding some toys maybe like that you guys could use together is really fun. And then showing him how to use the toy on you so it's not such a separate thing. Um, Sometimes, Mm -hmm. yeah, mutual masturbation is really fun if you guys are, you're using it and then he's, you know, getting himself off and then you kind of look over and it's hot. And then he's also seeing how you touch yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you have any recommendations for toys for clitoral stimulation? Well, say like I'm on top or something. I, I wish there could just do something hands free, but there is. There are no. That? I've got hands free stuff for you. I've got know about all the toys in the planet. I don't think we talk about toys as much on here as we should. But you guys, I know about every toy on the planet. So I think. Well, first of all, right now, are you not? What kind of toy are you using right now? Uh, it's just a bullet so that I can kind of hold it. A bullet. Yeah, yeah bullets can be kind of it. awkward to hold in your hand. So the first thing yeah. I always recommend is the WeVibe Sync. And it's a couple's toy that you can actually wear it during intercourse totally hands-free. So it's like a C shape. Oh. And it fits inside. So it's like a C. And it goes inside of you. It like clips on. <laughs> it clips onto your vagina, your vulva. So it's like <laughs> hitting it. Inside's hitting your G-spot. And the outside sees on your clitoris. And so for a lot of couples that can work and the WeVibe Sync is the best because you could actually even has different vibration patterns. You can control it with an app if you want or you just turn it on and go. So that's a great one for a lot of couples. There's also like a, a vibrating ring, like a penis ring that he could wear and then you could, you know, when you're on top of him or underneath him, you could also feel great. Um, and Screaming O makes some rings if you want to check those out. It's all at sexwithemily.com if you go to our website. We've got a lot of things there okay. about toys. And we also have a blog on there, I believe, too, about like how to talk to your partner about using toys and first time using them. So thank you, Mackenzie, for calling in. Keep me posted. Yeah. Call me with any thank questions. You. Let's do a little sex hack. Okay. All right. All right. So this came to us as an email, but we thought this would be a fun thing to talk about. Okay. From Amy, who's 27 in South Carolina. And she says she's been with her boyfriend for about a year. He went to a different law school, so now they're long distance. She's really proud of him, but in a shocking twist, not as psyched about the distance. Um, She really values physical touch. That's her love language. And long distance is obviously making that difficult. At first, sexting and phone sex were new and exciting, but it's become harder to initiate with him back in school and living with roommates. Do you have any recommendations for keeping things hot? Oh, okay. This is from Amy in North Carolina. Okay, Amy. Here's the thing. It is tricky to be in a long distance relationship. My love language is the same as yours. I am physical touch and I think it could be really tough not to have that with a partner. So how do you actually keep the intimacy alive in a long distance relationship? And but the good news is that it's a pretty good time to if you're in a long distance relationship. It's not a bad time to be alive in this in this century, in this year to be in a long distance relationship because there's a lot there's a lot more easy ways to connect and beyond just like texting and calls I think it's important to like make a date like pencil in time that you guys are going to have a date and it's going to be a date that you're skyping you're facetiming and you're sitting there eating she's you're having a conversation and you're talking about things and you're like having you know you could get dressed up and make like a dinner out of it like you're on an actual date like I don't know like I facetime with a few people like my nieces and my mom and I feel like It's not the same thing, but it's pretty damn close. Like it, you know, I can't touch them and give them a hug, but you are connecting over FaceTime. So I think make it a date and be like, I'm not going to have my roommates come in. You're going to lock the door. We're going to have a plan. I also think it's important to, um, to have some good conversations when you're on these calls too. Like, like being away from each other and you guys have been together for a year and you're 27. So you guys are still figuring yourself out. And the thing about long distance relationships, the problem with them is that, I like to call them like vacation relationships because it mm. feels like you're actually on a vacation every time you're together. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because you miss each other a lot and then you're like, oh my God, we see each other and everything's amazing because we only have four days and we're going to suck the life out of it and each other. And the sex is amazing. And you know, then you have that that teasing and that longing built in 
to this scenario. And that's what we all crave for sex, at least a lot of women and men. You know, we crave that like longing and desire and the teasing is so hot. So you have that built in. That's the good news. But when you're away from each other, you're not living in the same place. It's hard to know, like, are we still compatible and how do we stay connected? So I think it's important to, to like still like, do you FaceTime and I'm saying, oh, this is why the reason why it's great to be single is because there's a lot of really cool friggin' toys right now. WeVibe has most of their toys are can be connected to the We Connect app, which is a free app, which is kind of like FaceTime. But however, like you could, there's video component. Your partner can vibe you. They can control your vibrator that you are using from their phone. It can pair from anywhere in the world. In the next room, in the next continent, you can... Um, control it. So that's really fun too. You guys can be sexy together. Also, have a conversation where you're like asking questions. Like there's all those great books where you like, or not books, but like lists of questions that you ask your partner, like things you don't know about them. Um, Like how do they see their life and what do they, you know, rather than just like, how's your day? Like this, I think just talking can allow you guys to get more intimate when you're saying like, what, what do you see in your I don't know. You're, what are those games that they have? Like those table conversation games? Or like, yeah, like really table good, topics, I think is Table what topics or like they ones for, like, for dating or how to get your part, to know your partner better. There's like some questions. I can't think what they are now, but I've had them before. I've talked about them before about like really like get to know your partner questions. Like I think it was in that thing, like if you've been dating someone for a year, what you should already know. Mm-hmm. And I think like, like, like it's a good time to not to... I, I, I'm cool with you in the long distance relationship, but my other rule with long distance relationships is that... Make sure that there is a end point. Make sure that there is a time that you know that you're going to be moving back to the same city. Because that can also just be a dead end. You're like, well, why am I in this long distance thing? I'm 27 years old. There's a lot of people around, where young people, single people where I'm at. And like, I don't know that you want to spend all the time in a long distance, long distance relationship if it's never going to be a point where you're moving back to the same city. So all that's important. Um, play together, mutual masturbation. Have patience and ask real questions. And for, don't get fooled by the amazing weekends you have together once a month or whenever because there's some real relationship work to figure out when you're not together. Yeah, I know it's probably hard depending on how far away people are and their money situation. But how if if that wasn't really – like how often do you think at least, like bare minimum for long-distance relationships, you should go without seeing each other? Or like, you know, like how often should you God, try I, to meet up? I mean, honestly, like once a month if you can. But mm-hmm. I think people go a lot longer than that. Obviously, like once a week. Like I remember I had a boyfriend when I was in San Francisco, LA. We'd see each other maybe once every two weeks, but it's an hour flight. People do it all the time though. I just think, and, and you know what? It does work for a lot of couples. Like super busy. They have great times when they're together. But I just think, you know, more so than not. And don't get lazy with it. Like the intimacy, you can't have the real physical intimacy. So you have to get intimacy through talking through the phone, through like learning more about each other just because you're not apart. Like, yes, you can talk about your day, but get into some meatier topics because you don't have the distractions of like, let's just go to a movie. Let's just watch Netflix. Like you actually have to talk to the person. Mm-hmm. So I think find out. Yeah. I and mean, try to figure out moving in the same city. Yeah. I mean, I think because I'm, I'm a person that I really don't think I'm capable of doing a long distance relationship. I just... N- and if maybe it was one of the, it would be one of those things where when we're with when we're actually physically with each other we'll be with each other but when we're apart we're apart yeah because i just don't i wouldn't be able to not that i wouldn't trust them i just wouldn't be able to like handle not having them there like yeah. i need that yeah that, that, that makes sense that totally makes sense you would i wouldn't need that but i actually used to have you know, ever had one yeah i've had several now that i'm remembering and i i actually like when i was like 28 i was dating a guy in texas for like a year maybe but I was so busy and so like but he would he was oh god I hope no one let he would (laughs) I just know but the point is (laughs) I'm like he was so over like I met him and he was like flipped over me every week he sent me he sent me like these orchids like I remember they came to my off every day like he was sending me orchids and lilies Mm. And he was so, he was flying in almost every weekend to San Francisco and they like, take me to Mexico. It was like a very, he was a very like extravagant long distance boyfriend. But I would see him a lot. And, but I realized that once we, he finally did move to the city that it was really fun dating because it was a vacation relation. Mm-hmm. And he was very attentive and he filled all my needs in that way because I love like words and you, I would wake up in the morning and there'd be like an email from him with all the words and all the things. And he, I often saw him. But then when we moved to the same place, I realized I was probably long distance for a year after like 
two months. Oh, I was like, no, no, no <laughs> way. <laughs> this is going to end. And then, yeah, the guy, I've done several long days. I used to actually joke that I really liked them because I was so freaking busy that I kind of liked it. This is how we've changed over time. I don't think now. <laughs> I'm like, now I d- would not want a long distance relationship at all. I just, I want to be with someone and see them and hang out. Yeah. So, because even if someone's in Venice, to me, that's long distance. Like, I can't date someone who lives more really? than two miles from me. Yes. It's, it's I, Unless they come to me, I don't, I hate driving. I'm never going to get there. I'll be late. Like, I dated a guy in Venice when I first moved here. I'm in West Hollywood. If that doesn't mean anything to you, it's like a 45 minute drive, if you're lucky. And like, on the weekends, it's like an hour and then parking. And I, I, I hate, I was it's such a difficult. bitch by the time I got there. I was like, I'm not, I don't know. I just, I really like my own. I, I like being in my space. Well, my what about like the compromise? Oh, really? I would compromise. If you really, oh, really, really like the I'm realizing a guy. pattern that like my last three boyfriends were all upset that I did not go to their house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I compromised. I would go there. I would. I did. I tried. Or like to go meet there. in the middle. Like, but then most where are you going to have sex? Well, yeah, wait, we're having sex. Well, I get that. I'm saying like during the week, if you really wanted to see them, like find a spot to eat dinner, like meet in the middle. Because yeah. 45, honestly, I mean, Venice isn't that far, but okay. it's the traffic it's that the traffic. drives you crazy. It's not just 45. It's like no, an hour. It's, it's horrible. Right. It's and traffic. the parking too. I totally understand that. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I miss about driving is that I would call people more and I would listen to more radio and podcasts and stuff. And now I don't do anything because my commute is six minutes. <laughs> so I, d- I don't talk to anyone and I don't, I don't get home. and I don't want to talk. Anyway, the point is... I just want someone to live 1.2 miles from me like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too much ask? Yeah. But I get long distance when you're busy. Yeah, you would know. this would you, this person when they would send you like like letters or emails or whatever they ever like sexy emails? Like what? If I they- have them in the garage printed. Um, we'll find them. Yeah. This is like all the stories. The twenty. The uh, were they sexy? Sexy? No. no. I mean, sexy for me at 28, I didn't even know what that meant. Can you make a sexy email? Like, would that be yeah. something that people can do? I don't know. Oh, just yes. another. <laughs> you guys, send sexy notes to each other. This is the time, you guys, when you used to get, like, letters and, like, you used in the mail. Like, he was definitely saying, like, you're so hot and I'm into you and stuff like that. So I think it's really sweet to write, like, a sexy like what you're thinking about and what you want to do to them next time you see them and like a kinky story about the last time you're a writer write up like the hot last time you were together and what made you so like turned on by it like send it to them in the mail people don't do that anymore i would love to get a letter because i'm tired of bills yeah <laughs> That's exactly. Like when you're younger, you're like, I want to get mail. And then when you get older, you're like, it's always bills. It's always bills. There's never a letter. That's true. I'll but I used to letter. mail was so exciting. <gasps> I'll, I send I'll, I'll send you a letter. I'll send you all letters. Aww. I was thinking that, but then Michelle would mail it for me, probably. Yeah, it would be me. But <laughs> um, it would be from Emily with a little kiss. Yeah, I love getting letters. I, can't we bring back letters? Can't we bring back mailing people stuff? I mail. think that's great. Send them something sexy. Use your words. I love Because you're going to need words to connect in a long distance relationship as well. Okay, let's talk to Marcus, who's 25 in California. And I'm not sure if I understand the question, but I'm going to, to see. It says, why is sex between a man and a woman? Why does it always have to be like taking from a woman? So let's that's see if we can. That's my question. Yeah. Hey, Marcus. Thanks for calling. Hey. Hey, what's up? <laughs> trying to stop before I gotta go into work to be honest with you nice okay I'm here for just to waste some time with me okay so here's a little about me I'm a 6'11 315 black man uh, and when I approach women um, or talk to them they assume I want I, all I want is you know that all I want to just take from them I don't want to take from them I, I want to have the pleasure I don't want to give pleasure Okay. You know what I'm like I, I aim to please, but it's a little difficult because of my height and my stature and my my voice. I guess I guess I would say. Okay. So I guess I'm stereotyped as somebody that wants to take. So how do I avoid that? That's so interesting. Okay, Marcus. So tell me how you know that to be true. Give me some evidence. So, okay, here's an example. Um, maybe about four weeks ago, uh, I approached a woman. She was maybe about five eight, five nine, nice long hair. Um, your body was like just my type, you know. Um, and I approach her, you know, I, I approach her in a, in a in a very calm manner, and I I promote what I do is I'm a stand up comedian, and oh. I promote, you know. And then she came at me saying, you know, the only reason why you're trying to talk to me is because you want to get some from me, and it's not happening. 
And I was and I sat there and I looked at her and in my mind I'm going, wait a minute, did, <laughs> I, I I think you're cute, but you right. know why you think automatically off top I'm trying to get get that right. Yeah, and so that happens to you. I mean, here's the thing. I feel like, did you just go up to her and start talking to her? Or you were just, some maybe she was well, playing you. Okay. Like, women like to tease back. And she's like, you just want to, I mean, I think that's a certain personality type. Right? Oh, of a woman, no, like, no, if no, you just started to. Her face. What? I said, like, you should have seen her face, boy. She looked at me crazy. <laughs> she did, I mean, she looked at you like, like, did you just, you just randomly start talking to her and she was like, you just want to get, I mean, I understand that a lot of women have that, where were you guys at, first of all? Were you at a bar? Were you at a club? Were you at the comedy club? So this was, I was roaming about promoting because I have a show coming up. <clears throat> and there was a group of friends. And my, my intro is, hey, my name is Marcus. People just call me Fudge. I'm a stand-up comedian. Um, and then the question was from one of her friends was, why do they call you Fudge? Um, there's different, you know, scenario, different things that I say. One of them is, um, sweet enough to give you diabetes. Uh, sweet enough to call the cavity. Um, <laughs> I can show you better not to tell you. It's just different stuff that I play along with. Uh-huh. And then the other friend, and then one of the other friends kind of like started talking to me while the other friends were talking. And okay. the, the girls started talking to me, I'm sorry. And it was, it went from me promoting and me talking to her like, hey, let's hang out some time and to this all you want. Okay. Well, but you said sweet enough to give you candy, sweet enough, whatever. I'm this guy, I'm coming up to a group of four women. So in that scenario, I could see her with her friends and you're like, let's go. If you asked her out within the first 30 seconds and let's go out some time and you're talking about sweet enough, even though that's your jam, fudge, you know, diabetes, candy. I, I could understand that. I could understand a woman just kind of making a joke like you're not going to get me or you know, maybe she gets hit on all the time. So I think it's your approach. Like, you know what I mean? We all know as women, the guys who want to get with us. So if a guy is like right away, like this will be the best thing you ever had or I'm sweet, even if you're joking and it's your jam. But if you just go up to someone at Starbucks and you start talking like, how's your day? I don't think that that woman would be like, you just want to have sex with me. Even if you asked her out by the time your latte got there. You know what I'm saying? And there is there is kind of a stigma around comedians. We do talk about that here. We've all dated comedians, I believe, or at least two of us, three of us. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I love comedians. I do. I mean, come on. But I, so that's what I think it is, Mark. I mean, it could be your stature. I get, I get all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Just like being a, being a hot chick, getting hit at all the time. Like there's stuff like that. Like you, I used to think like, oh, do guys just think I'm pretty and I'm not smart? That was my big issue. Mm-hmm. My like, tw- I remember with this whole thing in my twenties, I was like, guys would just talk to me because they want to sleep with me. Don't they ever want don't they think I'm like smart and funny and cool? Like mm-hmm. I was like, you just think I'm pretty. This is my insecurity. So it was a similar thing, but it was because I was carrying that in. Like it was my own thing. Cause I know that I'm all those things. I'm just having a total flashback here. Cause I don't feel that way anymore. Now I'm like, it was so nice when I was getting hit out every five seconds. But now I feel like that's your own thing, Marcus, that you're expecting that. And maybe you are putting that out there in some way. I feel like what we are thinking, that's what you're bringing to the table. So I think if you just go in without that, it won't be, that won't be your reality. And think about the environment. If a guy goes up to three groups of women in 30 seconds, you're asking someone out, they're, that's the perception. Nothing well, to do with your stature. The conversation that was like 30 minutes in, though. Right. But you like lead, you're the lead. Like 30 minutes. But you're like the comedian and you're making jokes and you're like ta- zoning in on her and not her friends. And also another way, like I don't know what else you said there. But I feel like we can tell when guys make those little signs like, I'm going to be the best you had or we're going to, it's, I don't know, there's just probably things you said that you're not so clear on. But I think if you ask more questions and you're talking about yourself, is always a sure way for women and ever men to feel more connected to you. Like on a date, listen more than you talk. So I know that's hard as a comedian and as a performer, but I think if you're leading with all the charm and I'm this and that, that that could be the thing that's putting him there. So I think if you just think about, I'm just going to ask questions more and pay attention to what they're saying, they're not going to get that impression. Gotcha. All right. Think about that, Marcus. All right. Good luck with your set tonight. I will, I will, All right. I will, Thanks for calling Sex with Emily. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show. We love hearing from you. And thanks for listening. And thanks to my amazing team, Ken, Michelle, producer, Jamie, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.